So considering the list of different industrial metrics that I showed earlier, the Bohm's top 10 list, which tells uh, different theorems and facts about software projects in real life, and seeing that this list already is more than 20 years old at this point, it begs the question, how long have we been actually uh, doing software development and software engineering research? Well, the answer is actually that it's at this point more than 60 years. These uh, facts and observation by Bohm are really uh, focused and they are really spot on even today but they are a rather new thing even if they are already 20 years old stuff. So in this presentation I'm going to talk about the uh, evolution of software engineering methods and uh, give a, a sort of a small retrospective on how we ended up in this situation. Uh, well, first of all, we all know that the computers were developed during the Second World War and uh, matured as a technology right after the war, and they started their lives as uh, decryption systems, so ways to crack down enemy armies, ways of encrypting their messages. So basically, they were more or less just really, really sophisticated calculators. And this actually held through throughout the 50s. Uh, in 50s the computing computers, well, they were sized of small building and all the uh, pictures of huge, humongous uh, switchboards and other things, supercomputers which the evil scientists use in their volcano layers are uh, more or less from 50s and 60s. But anyway, in the 50s, the computers were more or less still just uh, sophisticated computing systems. Unlike the ones developed during the Second World War, they were programmable systems, meaning that they could solve different kinds of soft, uh, mathematical problems, but developing software for them was just more or less just uh, programming the code and testing that the uh, test, re test uh, material or test script uh, resulted to the same solution as the mathematician or phys physician had already calculated beforehand. So that was more or less all that was needed for programming work. Uh, in the 60s, the computers were finally able to break out from one person's mind, meaning that they were able to outdo the one developer's ability to remember or understand uh, software system details, meaning that one person, ha no matter how brilliant or sophisticated or computer savvy they were, were unable to remember all the details of all the possible systems simply because, because the programs were that much larger. So. That led to either poorly optimized programs where different functionalities were developed but they really weren't functioning that efficiently or on the other hand they were functioning efficiently but the uh, software was unnecessarily lacking features because the programmer didn't have enough uh, experience or understanding to do all the features and other things. So this was the so-called software crisis, which was coined in 1968 uh, as a sort of an alarm on uh, Western countries, mostly led by NATO countries, uh, to start uh, focused research on developing software and on the processes of doing so, basically meaning that that was the point when software engineering research was started. Of course, since we were already doing software, at that point when the software crisis was declared, uh, we have been, had been doing software for 20 years already. So, for example, IBM and other companies had models and defined practices for developing software, but they were nowhere near systematic enough for general 
purpose use or they were company secrets or information or knowledge of really really small group of highly uh, specialized technicians who weren't normally available for hire in smaller companies something like may uh, uh, expert masons uh, during the dark ages which led to uh, developing a secret society to maintain their ability to uh, drive out competition from other companies. But of course we didn't end up with a secret society, we ended up with uh, software engineering research. So, starting from this uh, software crisis, uh, during the 70s the structured approaches were defined. So it meant that we had structured programming, structured design and structured analysis meaning that we uh, had a systematic approach of doing analysis on functionality, what we have to be able to do with the software, developing data flows, what is saved, what sort of data is used, and doing hierarchical designs on what uses what. This is also the time when the first mention of the modern waterfall model, as we know it and as I described it earlier, was first seen. Uh, and, but uh, even if the waterfall was identified at this time, it had already existed as a, some sort of an idea on how to develop software in uh, several years already, but it just wasn't documented very well prior to this uh, presentation or paper by Royce. Anyway, during the 80s we went with data-driven approaches. Instead of designing software based on the structure or architecture, we designed that the better point of analysis and design was the data we were using. So basically, the start of object orientation and in the relationship modeling. Also, the rise of databases, relational data, was something that really uh, was innov innovative and revolutionary approach here because if we were able to find one information, for example the person's name, it was trivially easy to find the person's address or what sort of car they drove if, or where, what sort of house they had if we had a, a well-defined customer database. So, going on forward, uh, on the 19th, the object orientation was something that gathered foothold and also the birthplace of UML. So, the UML was sort of a um, solution to uh, give a common language for object-oriented design and also beyond object orientation to all software design. And this started 90s and it's still going on. And if we want to go into the last decade of software engineering, we might say that if 90s was the object-oriented era, now we are in the agile approach era. So uh, there was a recognition that we have to have something between iron-bound plan-driven approaches and doing cowboy coding, meaning that we should have uh, methods which are less formal than something like rational unified process or, or defense, defense industry approaches, uh, but some, and uh, that's where the agile thinking comes from. The extreme programming, test-driven development, scrum, agile prototyping, all these approaches but still keep in mind that even if the buzzwords were generated at this time, they had already existed as long as waterfall model, in fact. Because the first concepts, which are really similar to extreme programming or Scrum, were in fact uh, identified and uh, explained in different research papers at, at the same era as waterfall model. However, what makes the waterfall model be the classic traditional approach is that it was somewhat simple and it's easy to uh, observe, whereas with agile approaches we need experienced crew and it doesn't fit all sorts of software projects. 
waterfall with uh, waterfall or variations of it fit everywhere, but they aren't necessarily the best option. Okay, so this is basically how we got here. We first had the crisis of not being able to do stuff, then we had the structure defined, then databases and relationships defined, then came object orientation and agile approaches, and now today where are we going? Possibly or most likely somewhere to clouds or uh, off-site service systems or other things where the idea of what is my software system is blurred from one uh, closed network to com uh, several modules or servers functioning each other. This is just guessing work but I guess my ge uh, this guess here is as good as anything I've read from anywhere else.